Hey guys, and welcome to the latest in the Sleepy Talk podcast. As you can tell, I've got my telephone voice on now, as Brian very uh, rudely pointed out in the last one, that I have a posh voice when I'm doing my intros, and not when I'm doing the podcast. So thanks for that, Ryan. You're welcome, bro. <laughs> so today, I am joined again with Ryan and Jordan. Um, we are definitely 100% not doing this straight after the last recording. Definitely not, no. 100% not. not. And um, you can't see us, but we're definitely not wearing the same clothes either. No. Now he's I... just been bitter about my comment on how posh his <laughs> intro voice is for a yeah, full week. <laughs> yeah, it's just completely just, he's been teeth, seething at the, uh, at the teeth about it. He's, you can see him foaming at a mouth. I am, oh, honestly. I feel like I'm going through sleep paralysis right now and I just can't move out of this, uh, this hostility that I'm getting. <laughs> Sorry, mate, I'll just get off your chest, so... Wow, that could be taken so many different ways, but we're just going to move on. So, I've already introduced them and they've not plugged themselves, so that's their fault. So, <laughs> so uh, again, Brian and Jordan are here, and for this episode, it's a special one. It's a Pirates of the Caribbean... Well, it's not really a Pirates of the Caribbean special. What we're going to be talking about is aquatic cryptids. In particular... We're going to be talking about the merman or mermaids, because we're all about that political correctness over here. Mm, we're going to be talking mers. about the kraken, and then Arr. we're going to look at the leviathan. Mm. So, Ryan, take it away. What do you like to think about at night? <laughs> Why? Why? No, that's not fair. Don't set me up like that. Um, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I, I don't feel comfortable explaining now that I'm going to talk about mermaids because I feel like you set me you up. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> it was either I could have said mermaids or mermen. I was thinking which one's better, and I thought, you know what? Ryan thinks about mermen yeah. at night. <laughs> yeah, but basically, since being invited on your podcast, um, and quite early on, you mentioned was it cryptozoology? Mm -hmm. uh, I gave that a good a old Google, and I was just like, oh. Well, um, this creepy, creepy pasta stuff can mean mermaids. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that, and then it turns out the podcast I did all the research for had nothing to do with anything related to zoology, cryptozoology. So I've been sat on the knowledge, mate. Well, to be to uh, be fair, the the podcast in question was the um, one with the Boisson, the lantern, and a phosphor. Fosfo. Fosfo, yeah. Fosfo. Fuzzy. Yeah, Good old Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Good old Fuzzy. Um, and that, that podcast just ran on for so long. There was so much to talk about. And that's why we've kind of changed up the way that we do in these podcasts now. Um, so we're going to pick one topic. Um, well, only when Ryan's in the podcast. We're going to pick <laughs> one topic. And then uh, if we go off on a tangent, at least we've covered the topic. Uh, right. If we pick multiple topics, then Ryan's just going to talk about I don't know what he just goes off on tangents and starts talking about Japanese bug fights, and uh, there we are. So... I wish I was the one that came across Japanese <laughs> bug fights, mate. I'll send you a link later. We'll we'll put no, a bet. Sort of nice, we'll and that, yeah. nice. I'll sort you out. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, I've gone with the uh, aquatic cryptoid mermaid because I just think they're cool. Merman. Um, yeah, merman, mermaid, mer people. Um, I mean, closest thing to a Aquaman we're gonna get, right? Very inclusive. What about mer pets as well? But maybe that's something we'll get onto in a moment. Neo pets. <laughs> Muppets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll stop. <laughs> carry on, carry on. I'm trying to be structured. I'm trying to be in my head. I've got like this is how it's gonna go, and I'm oh, gonna yeah. do like so, a proper, so, you know, a proper on topic that thing. Join me on, other than the last one. You want to stay on topic, do you? You want to stay structured? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we well, go. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, told I've, heard, I've heard about this I'm structure. Mm. <laughs> You've told me to, yeah, no. uh, to, to be structured. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. You throw me off, man. <laughs> Um, one thing I found interesting about it, anyway, doing my, my travels on the old interwebs about mermaids is uh, allegedly they came about in a place called, I don't know how to pronounce this, Azirio, A W S Y R I A, um, which was part of the Mesopotamian uh, oh, kingdom. 
I love that huh? word. Mesopotamian. Mesopotamian. Mm, it sounds like yeah. some type of potato. It's not like an element. <laughs> Potamian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mesopotamian. This is 20... Sorry. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mesopotamian. This is my problem. You can't give me a structure, bro. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Mesopotamians. <laughs> you just got to let me go. <laughs> yeah, 25th century BC is is the like, when it allegedly kicked off uh this goddess atagatis is how i'm gonna say it. it's, it's it's pronounced a-t-a-r-g-a-t-i-s um accidentally killed a human lover and as punishment for that she turned herself into a fish lady um and this surrounded is surrounded by desert this is what i mean um it's its location was like in between Turkey or in the middle of Turkey, Iraq, Syria, Iran, that you know, beautiful part of the world. Um to be fair, though, looking at maps, this is like, a small body of water to the west of where it was, and that was it. To be fair though, this is three thousand five hundred years ago. Or three thousand four hundred. So uh, back then it could have been like luscious rainforests and stuff, which all, all the maps ways. that I'd looked at seemed to sort of like want to pin it down on a modern map. And that's where I obviously learned it was where, you know, around that Middle East, uh, around that Middle East area in the Middle East, around those places I mentioned earlier. Mm. Um, but yeah, I found that very odd. Um, but I mean, it causes a problem for me because I, the goddess, um, I would have like much preferred something along the lines of, you know, it's, it's, it's rumored that they just, some other evolutionary branch that we today sort of was you know we came apart from and they went that way we went this way they stayed in the oceans we went on land um uh but no they came with um i mean a goddess accidentally kills a human lover turns herself into a fish woman is it's obviously a very very brief summary of what actually occurred i, I reckon if it did occur <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, yeah, it's sort of again. The more, the more I look into the things you introduce me to, that the less wonder I have about them, the less exciting it was. But that <laughs> that's has... a really deep and depressive thing. <laughs> the more you introduce, me to, that's <laughs> like wonder, you yeah. take all the wonder out of it. Like ghosts and spooky wickies. No science, right? And science and oh, okay. So boring. <laughs> like, just... Mermaids are meant to be like this amazing thing, and now they're just fish ladies. Well, no, that's how it started. That's how it started. Um, it was the sort of, you know, almost modern pop culture, similar to vampires, I suppose. I mean, vampires today are not what vampires were created as, were they? Um, you know, they sparkle and stuff now, and they all got that really nice app. We, we, don't, we don't talk about those. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, it's it's in, 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 insulting, insulting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, maybe the same thing happened with, with mermaids. Allegedly, Christopher Columbus himself recorded sightings of uh, mermaids off African coasts back in good old days, 1493. I'm sure it was uh, in Africa that he saw it, because, I mean, Christopher Columbus isn't really famous for being a nautical genius. I mean, the dude literally landed in America when he was sailing towards India, so... Mm. It's these recordings of these in the 49th off the coast of Africa, I don't know specifically what part of Africa. I've seen it on a couple resources. But what what's noted about his recordings of them is that they weren't attractive. Whereas a lot of the recordings prior to that was that these are these beautiful women. He... Uh, it's believed that he's his sighting was manatees um but obviously under the reflection of the water this is what it's looking like now the reflection of the water he, he obviously with his idea of this mermaid in his head because of this this fable this legend or this belief of mermaids at the time um he saw them because oh they must have been mermaids i saw them they were sort of grotesque looking things is what we believe he saw but everything else about them in terms of uh evidence to support them didn't really grab me personally uh just that we seem to have some sort of attachment to them 
for some reason, whether that be pop culture or from something ancient, I don't quite know. Do you think it could yeah, be down to just go way back? sexual frustration with sailors? That easily could... That's a very feasible sort of answer for why they 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 had a they've got a place in I don't want to say society but like you know why why we have any sort of comprehension of them um, it's I don't, it's hard to say because there's no sort of recording of or records of how many sailors you know ever claim to have seen them just notable people that claim to have seen them. Uh, but it could easily be seasickness. You're going crazy. You know, you're out there, a bunch of dudes on a boat. You know, you see a manatee on some rocks. Think, you could get oh, confused. I'd tap that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you'd be like, know. yeah, I'm down, down <laughs> yeah. dirty. Yeah, I'm going to be fishing yeah. tonight. No, but I mean, mm. like, you, obviously, um, I say obviously, it, clearly, back then they didn't have uh, motorboats, they didn't have engines to, to power their boats they were all sailing boats mm. or rowing boats and if they were on a voyage out to india let's say from the south of england it's going to take a hell of a long time mm. um and let's say with columbus um obviously there weren't that many women's rights if there were any so if it was a voyage, they might not have had women on board, like at all. They might have had stowaways, or people might have snuck people on. But in general, you'd probably think it was a manned vessel rather than, you know, a. Uh... Hmm. Y- you know what I'm go- where I'm going with this. Yeah, so, yeah. a lot of yeah. men on a floating piece of wood for oui. weeks and months at sea. You're gonna find like waves or stars attractive at some point from the frustration of <laughs> you know <laughs> mm. minds wander and hallucinations happen yes so, um i mean it, it, i'd say that's very plausible to say that maybe it wasn't a hallucination and maybe it was made up to fulfill a fantasy you see what I did there? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, sort of like old school Playboy magazine type. You write in with your, with your yeah, stories. People just draw like fish ladies. I think, yeah, yeah. you know, man and man, they would just cruise in the seas, see some hot chicks on the rocks. No sirens, yeah. sirens on yeah, the rock. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of weird looking like sea creatures as well. Mm. I think the, the thing is that fish looks like an old man with a huge nose. Um, there's like sail fin fish that, that might under the water look like long hair, you know, swimming mm. really fast. I mean, there's there's so many things in the ocean that's, that the we've not even discussed. The thing that gets to me about it is the alleged way they move, isn't it? Mm. Um, that's so many things out there already, like, like you know, sea lions and that, that are sort of flop along on the bellies slide along <laughs> that's um, I want a piece of that. seals and that yeah i mean no but i mean from a distance you know you think what's that over there i can't quite see what it is and then it just flops into the the ocean in that way you know then you never you never get to see what it is dolphins. let your imagination run wired yeah um, dolphins yeah potentially yeah. yeah there was never enough time to get over to that rock to see what it was in time you see it from a distance through a probably not very clear telescope Mm. And then you just sit slide on its belly into the ocean. Mind wanders Pro- and one thing leads yeah. to another. Boom, aerial baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think my the, the biggest reason I want mermaids to be real is that then there might be a Sebastian out there as well. <laughs> I would love a little little Caribbean crab man. Not just, <laughs> right. sit, just sit serenading you and singing to you. <laughs> I mean, the, the creepy side of it is, uh, are they called sirens? Yeah. yeah. So the the ones that look beautiful and then uh, lure you in. Uh, yeah, they could be a a a a man eating sort of aquatic sea life. I mean, if they are humans in humanoid. sort of humanoid, yeah, and and sort of the depictions of them say so some sort of human intelligence. Um, 
then particularly in the sea when animals sea creatures like need to develop over time to defend themselves they can do some pretty nuts things with evolution um so what's to say mermaids ain't evolved in a way to say similar to my concept of ninjas like you can't tell me ninjas aren't real because they're designed not to be seen so the fact you've never seen one just goes to prove that they could be real so mermaids maybe have evolved to survive um in such a way over time to because you know that's what all beings do and that's why we've not come across them because well you know if they've got any sort of intelligence like us then you probably figured out that they don't want to mess with us because yeah. you're likely to catch them and slice them up and the rest of it yeah. uh science them shall we say yeah i mean there was a uh, there was a documentary that came out i think it was like five or six years ago it was a spoof documentary but they tried to play it off as real where they found a sighting of a mermaid mm. um there was in the submarine or some sort of um you know them small submarines where they jump in them and they're like the size the of three men yeah 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 <laughs> that goes so deep and stuff and they they saw something swim past the window like we we all know it was spoof, but it did get some traction. It was a bit like the Blair Witch type fair, effect. I think it was around the sort of era of Coney twenty twelve. So when everybody was gullible, and if it was on Facebook, it must be true. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, I think Snopes went straight into that and was like, "Nope, that's fake. That's fake." You know, and and everyone knows it's fake now. Well, everyone, so it's most people who are of a sane mind know that it's fake um otherwise I every see. news story in the world would run with it mm. yeah they would run with it and run with it and run with it there'd, there'd be no secret society out there that could stop the media from saying wow this thing is real because they make so much money off of it yeah no. it opens the floodgate they, up and they'll just so roll with it yeah. funding to go to that area to to find whatever it is but that's not to say that even though that video was fake that these things don't exist oh. maybe again they could be something that's completely natural is, that we haven't linked yet is there an area 51 for mermaids in that so they've been found but you know it's a government secret i mean it's just i, I think back to the whole sort of science at it and it is extremely feasible that there are humanoid-esque animals, sea creatures rather. Um, if we were able to develop into what we are, then like and and adapt to land, but we came from the ocean, it would have made sense that at some point or another, like something. It just depends on how unlimited evolution is, I suppose, and how you know much we're willing to accept out a side of our knowledge it could be yeah i mean anything's plausible when it comes to evolution it's just mutation over time um mm. uh, it's mutation after mutation after mutation after mutation we've mutated enough that we are the top as much as we can get killed by a lot of things um mm. our intelligence is way above most terrestrial life and aquatic um we we have evolved to a point where we are the top of the food chain um so you're right in what you're saying that if we went this way then other things could have gone that way but to me anyway i wouldn't have thought they would look humanoid because humanoid in the ocean would be the opposite of what would become top of the food chain or mm. at least um able to adapt and survive in the ocean like you look at fish, you look at seals, they're all streamlining, they're all similar. Um, mm. way, dolphins and sharks look very similar, they just have different ways of swimming. We wouldn't have a head and a neck yeah, um, exactly. if we'd adapted to yeah. And it's the same as like birds. Birds are completely different, but that's because they fly. Bats mm. don't look like birds, but they have similar characteristics. Yeah. Uh, but bats are mammals. Again, it, it, it's possible, but I think that stuff that's in the ocean will look very similar to other things that's in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, but again, it could be possible, you know. Uh, seals but... definitely have paws on the front. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're flippers, but they, they kind of 
and the seals look like dogs. There's yeah, no denying that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no yeah, denying yeah. that. And they, they can go in water and in land, you know, so they've evolved to a point where they can do both. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it all depends on the evolution of it has gone, as you've said. Dar 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 Darwinism, isn't it, at work? Yeah. You think about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like turtles, tortoises, they look exactly the same. But mm. obviously one's built for walking on land and the other one's built for swimming. They have different legs mm. and things. So you, you again you what you're saying, Ryan, it's... is could completely plausible. Mm. Completely I, plausible. There's a little bit one other just the thing I want to point out is, is the earliest uh, sort of depiction of a mermaid in England was on some chapel in Durham Castle in ten seventy eight. Um, and the depiction is very similar to, you know, our idea of a mermaid today. Um, now, it was it's it's, it's on a chapel. Um, it's a mermaid, you know, chapels at the, for the purpose. Um, I just find it an odd place to have found a depiction of a mermaid all that time back then, um, and they still be sort of obviously not in the same way not in a serious tone i mean obviously it's cartoons and fantasy these days but still be something that we we we, we just haven't dismissed and forgotten with time as with a lot of other things that haven't been proved to be real since way back when you know um so there's something we like to about them we like to clutch to or maybe it just got commercialized and we fell for it. I don't know. Anything is plausible. Until... It, it, the thing is, if we don't discover something, it doesn't mean it never existed. Not, does it? Yeah. Yeah. it just means mm. that we've not discovered it and we've not found proof to deny it. Mm. Yeah. Or, I mean, how how much of the ocean's actually been discovered? Like, percentage-wise. Exactly. Yeah, it's very little. So, have like, we gone further out into space than we have, like, yeah. into our own oceans or something? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, right. And a lot of things with climate change and things like that, a lot of things retreat. Um, we all know, or well, maybe we don't, but um, when it comes to, like, cooling temperatures and things, uh, things tend to go to a bigger mass of water because it's an insulator. If you go to shallower water, mm. you're more likely to freeze. If you go to deeper water, you're more likely to keep warm. Mm. So, mm. with ice ages and things like that, and the temperature being cold for the planet, you'd expect to find a lot of things in the deeper parts of the ocean. So, the massive uh, Mariana trenches and things like that, that's seven miles deep. Um, Imagine with, the pressure as well. Yeah. Pressure for anything insane. living down like real deep to where we haven't been down yet like yeah they must be stacked but again it could be you know depending on structure or density yeah of... exactly and stuff like that and maybe insulation you know could have could be built in such a way that the bones are so far in for so far under like a layer of fat or whatever and it's structured in such a way that maybe it can be that size and survive the pressures of the ocean. We don't know. It's, it's, it's again, evolution, if obviously those size things existed. It could be. I'd imagine it works probably more on sort of like the scale of gravity for the actual pressure. The smaller things are, the less pressure is exerted onto them mm. because they're not mm. resisting as much. Yeah. So um, I know that we're not able to cope in pressures that far enough down we, we can't even scratch the surface of how deep the ocean is with our own yeah. bones. Um, but that's just because we're not adapted to it uh, the things that live really deep are like um, squids squids don't have bone um, mm. there are certain yeah. types of fish like that lantern fish that yeah them, they're it cool tends to get you either have massive things that don't have any vertebrae or anything like that, or any sort of bone structure, or you get small things with bone structures. But I could I be think... wrong. I could be completely wrong. I know that certain uh, whales can dive down to huge depths. I think the whale shark can dive to like really deep depths, but it's adapted to do it. So maybe I'm mm -hmm. just spouting absolute rubbish. But mm -hmm. from my understanding, anyway... Uh, 
uh, a lot of the things that live down there have either they're either small or have no or little to no bones. Yeah, I, I just think if if they were a real thing, they would have established society well away from us. Um, yeah. Uh, for obvious reasons, not that I'm, you know, a human hater or anything like that. Um, so again, I, I I hold them in the same respect as like the classic ninja, in that like they wouldn't be seen. They do everything they could do to not be seen, and we haven't seen them. So yeah, team mermaid for for real. Pl plenty of things can camouflage as well. I mean, this is. Mm. Perfectly plausible. Especially under yeah. the ripples of the water and stuff like that. That's allegedly what Christopher Columbus saw, it's what we've decided he saw, because, you know, we respect him. Uh, we have to justify what he said as something we understand. Otherwise, other stuff he said or did might be discredited. So, mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah it's uh, a he, he said, she said type of scenario. You, yeah. you say you saw something, you didn't mm. see it, but what are you going to believe? You know? Mm. But just it's like his the very... last podcast that we were talking about, they. It, there's that many stories on it, mm -hmm. that many depictions of of um, sightings and things like that. That mm -hmm. I mean, it could be true. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. all before. Same thing. Yeah. It, all before a certain sort of animation house got hold of it and like almost tried to it was almost cemented the image of them in our heads. Mm -hmm. uh, even before history. that it was all very yeah it was very <laughs> similar even before then and that's that's what i'm like okay and because it goes way back as well um back to when we used to think very differently and it's still quite similar now i'm like for something to maintain an image ish for that long um might be something more in it i don't know so you said area 51 for mermaids bermuda triangle Oh boom! Yeah, that's where they live, mate. Yeah, that's so, why nothing comes out of there because sword. they're nothing taking it down. So, <laughs> <in that. laughs> so, last, so thanks for just, just you know. So everything I've said, null and void. Great. Right. Um, <laughs> so, well, what what I'd say is there'll be a GoFundMe uh, in the description. If you can fund us at least two million dollars, we will set out on an expedition to find mermaids in the Bermuda Triangle. Thank you. <laughs> Mermaids, mermaids, crackens, right. you know, leviathan, Every, you know, whatever you want. Mermaids we'll try and, and find mermen. It. We will Everybody find that mermen. donates will get entered into a draw to win three bottles of my e-liquid TGWD. Plug, boom, there you go, done. Yeah, done, he's, done, he's done it, he's done it. He's, he's, he's only gone and done it, boys. <laughs> he's only gone and done it. Um, what a lad. So I think we've, uh, we've drawn enough blood out of the mermaid stone or merman stone. I was going to say, I think we've done mermaids yeah. and let out, please, so, let's not go there. <laughs> Jordan, I mentioned squids. Squids, yeah. And we're going to talk about a gigantic squid, the get, Kraken. Get your Jack Sparrow hat ready. Because this is a mythological beast <laughs> that everyone knows about. Uh, um, so I, I'm just going to fire facts at you. I'm not going to go into as much depth as what Ryan did with Mer, Sorry, with, uh, yeah. Mer, Mer people. I um, <laughs> well, I know you are, but I, I'm going to spark some facts. You know, it's going to quick fire, boom, uh, and then we'll probably just probably move on from it. But uh, um, what I didn't know was that krakens uh, originally come from Norwegian folklore um apparently a 13th century norse legend um and apparently originally it was more crab like than squid no i didn't right. didn't know that either but yeah apparently uh early depi de depictions of the kraken uh, uh have it more of like appendages so more like a crab than a uh, you know tentacly like arms like the uh like the like a squid so um, it makes sense from the name to be fair yeah, but yeah. speaking of that though um there was a video on uh, i think it was the bottom of an oil rig there was a squid it was huge i don't think it was the type of giant squid but it actually mm. had uh they looked like spider-like legs it had managed to move its appendages into a way that it sort of folded in on itself so they looked like bone a bit like the um, like the crawler from is it gears of war what are they called they had those legs and then they would close the legs together and it would become like a, a rock hard shell you couldn't shoot it 
Yeah, the gigantic things. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, but sim, sim, kind of, yeah. But it kind yeah. of like um, as if you put your arms out and then you drop your elbows in, but you face your hands down. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes arms sense. Arms out yeah. to the side. Put your yeah, yeah, yeah. Hands down, and then bend your elbows in. It was like that. So, uh, okay, I'm actually doing plausible. it now. Yeah, I, I did it while I was explaining. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Everybody do the crab. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like when I'm, it's the frog ends. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I mean that that. Sorry to jump in, but that's. It just reminded yeah. me of that video. That is perfectly, perfectly plausible. We've cracked it, boys. We can move on. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so our Bermuda Triangle will go uh, there. We'll find this as well. We you know. All yeah, cracking it, boys. We've Ooh, cracked yeah, it. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a proposal to some good room to that one. Many, many depictions of the Kraken in terms of size as well. Uh, pretty, pretty vague. Um, so that is, is one depiction where it could be the length of 10 ships and another depiction where it's like could be a mile and a half long. So it's definitely a giant squid, but giant squids do actually exist, don't they? That's the thing. So they it could do. be entirely, yeah. entirely plausible that, you know, Back, way back when in the 13th century and stuff someone saw this gigantic squid and thought it was a lot larger than you know what it actually was no, um, pretty huge though mm, i mean it's, I know, I, I, <laughs> it's understandable <laughs> that um you see a squid that's that's seven eight times the size of you attacking the yeah. side of your ship and you're like oh this is a it's gigantic a mile monster. Long. <laughs> yeah i mean so, so for reference like how big is uh i mean a giant squid say the biggest one that's been found if if, if anybody knows or i don't know that like, in relation to a football pitch let me just I very quickly find that size pitch. for you size biggest biggest size all right let's have a look so 15 59 feet apparently is the uh, largest that scientists have found Jeez. uh and apparently weighed nearly a ton as well so that oh. is a monster right oh, there gosh yeah i would never go out into the open ocean again <laughs> you wouldn't even know that it's got you it would literally you'd get it it would hit you with its sucky pads and yeah so what kind of draw you in yeah don't they eat like uh, he's one of these animals that like eat amoebas and stuff they no 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 eat, eat, oh, so they no 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 they are mortal <laughs> enemies with the sperm whale so to take down gigantic sperm whales, then oh, sperm so like whales attack them. Godzilla attack type sperm battles whales, in the yeah. ocean. It's it's oh, it's like Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla. It's just whoa. Oh, and we've got footage of this, like... Yeah, we've got footage of it, like, Oh, though. There's, there's that's not why you've been sorted actual, out, lads. I don't think there's footage of them fighting, but there are oh. uh, old sperm whales that have got the sucky pads on the side. Um, and there's also like giant squid with huge chunks taken out of them that are still alive, um, which sort of reference to like sperm whale. And they know they go deep around the area where giant squid are, so it's it's clear that they are. The sperm whale oh. look like the hunters, but hmm. it's definitely uh, it's not fast food. So i've just had a quick search on google see if a see if video did exist apparently it does exist it does there is there there is actual footage apparently it's from 2012 uh of a colossal squid versus a sperm whale um i will let's say post a link over to you and you can put it in the description if you want but yeah no, there's plenty there's plenty of videos of you know this this clash this particular battle happening oh um i need to watch that so I, I I I need to watch that as well because it's bound to be epic. But um, but yeah, no, the videos apparently do exist. There's one even that was uploaded uh, um, this year, February 10th. So oh, don't 1080p. <laughs> 1080p, 1080p epic, epic four, battle, four, epic sea battle, lens flare, lens flare, big explosion, <laughs> battle music. Yeah, I think the, the scariest <laughs> thing. <laughs> but a giant squid would be that eye. I'm just looking at pictures of him now, and those eyes are creepy as me. Imagine like one that's bigger than you. It probably God. is the same size as you. To be fair, uh, the hmm. eye looking at you is probably about six foot. If it's like fifty nine feet, 
their eyes going to be like a few feet at least. Oh yeah, easily. Um, I don't even know whether their eyes are massive because of how deep they actually live. They could be huge, mm. or they could be could be very blind, my, my new. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, uh, mm. evolution. <laughs> <laughs> Darwinism so, definitely at work there. Yeah. So would a giant squid be considered cryptozoology well, sort of kraken, field because it's yeah the the kraken is would be, but a not. depiction of, well it is a, a cryptid an aquatic cryptid but given mm. that the giant or colossal squid was discovered after the law behind the kraken, okay we can associate it with the same thing. There we go. This is what I, this is. This is this is an example of what I joined these podcasts for, bro. Like, for examples of this to keep me in the faith that like this stuff could could actually be a thing. Uh, could be a thing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which brings us on to the Leviathan. Now, there's a lot of different sort of theories and depictions on the Leviathan. So the Leviathan is meant to be a sea serpent. Um. I think it's Jewish, and I think it's referenced in uh, quite a few like c- Christian books. Well, the Old Testament, as we know, is uh, Jewish. The New Testament is Christian, but the Bible has both of them in. Um, mm. So it's meant to be a sea serpent. Um, it's got a lot of different comparisons in the wider world as being sort of like a dragon or a world serpent. Uh, so if you've played, um, it's not Gears of God of War, the world serpents in that, that's meant to be the Leviathan. Um, mm. However, so uh, you've heard of Moby Dick? Yes. Uh, yeah. the, the story of that is obviously all about a whale, which is a sperm whale. Sperm whales fight krakens. There yeah. is a skull that was discovered that is a uh, previous species of sperm whale, which is two to three times the size of it, which they named the Leviathan Merville after uh, Emma Merville, who wrote Moby Dick. Although it's something that was named after the fact that the myth was there, it, it could be plausible to think a giant sperm whale as, as sperm whales look anyway, could look like a giant serpent. And back in the Jewish Jewish time in the Old Testament, which is thousands BC, that creature could still have been there. A huge whale, a predatory whale, that, that would rampage and, and attack like colossal squids and things like that. Mm. It, again, could be... Uh, could be it happens, I mean, when it comes to size, uh sea creatures uh don't really seem to yeah when it comes to land you're like elephant yeah that's quite big when it comes to sea creatures elephant you're like uh not not really pushing the biggest of things down there is it no. um so it's easy to believe that something that resided down there such a long time ago as well when the oceans are probably cleaner and safer mm. and whatnot could grow to be such a size i like the leviathan because Final Fantasy and Gary Dos. Yeah, I was about to mention yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that was my first introduction to Leviathan. It's the first time I even knew it, like, just its thing. And then I'm like, oh no, they robbed that from stuff that was already there. Fair mm-hmm. enough, but I just want to leave it with Final Fantasy because fanboy. What yeah. was interesting about the Leviathan to me is the sort of one of the first introductions that I had to it was um, through Supernatural. Okay. Oh, the TV show. Yeah, so when, uh, if people do watch it, when uh, Castiel goes into purgatory and sort Mm. of like inhales all the souls so that they can become the next god, and uh, he ends up inhaling a lot of Leviathan. And Leviathans are meant to have been, well, in the supernatural lore anyway, were meant to have been God's first creation. And okay. he couldn't okay. control them, so he put them in purgatory. And then they got really angry. And... Yeah, they're very—they're so much stronger than angels, so much stronger than demons, etc. 
to a completely different depiction to what the, <laughs> the actual uh, religious term is and, mm. and all this religious lore behind it. But it's quite interesting um, that that's the way that they went with it. And the thing that killed them was Bleach. Bleach? Bleach. It was in the anime. I yeah. quite liked her. I think it was that bad. No, um, <laughs> uh, as in, uh, I think it was something peroxide as mm. their their uh, their downfall, um, which is a bit of a, a bit of a bit anticlimactic. But <laughs> I'm just I'm just clean cleaning my toilet out. Oh, hello, yeah. Ivan. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can fully get behind the idea of some uh, you know a, a creature of that sort of scale. Um, well, there, there isn't like a sort of standard scale for the thing, is there really? But a, a, a massively huge sea creature, simply for like I said earlier, um, it's just so feasible, uh, especially for how it looks. All the depictions of it, like, isn't it's not humanoid in any way. Um, it, it typically looks like it would, you know, do well in its environment. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, maybe it just got exaggerated a little bit over time, or maybe not. Maybe it was like you know, just the size of oceans. Who knows? Well, it's just like any myth or legend, isn't it? You can only mm. go by what the person says at the time, and that's like mm. over time, different stories, different depictions can increase size, decrease size. You know, have it have multiple eyes, have it have no eyes. You know, it's just mm. over the years, unless. I mean, even recorded in text. As I say, history is written by the winner. So, who yeah. to whoever it's... decided to continue the story on, that mm. will be the version that kind of passes on. Yeah, and mm. obviously, I've I've mentioned sort of like the Leviathan uh, Merville, which was named after the whole mythology behind the Leviathan, etc. But there's nothing mm. to say that, however many thousand years ago. There wasn't a creature that was just the end at the end of its um, extinction. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't look yeah, I've always seen them as sort of Gary esque uh, beings, but you mentioned like it being seen as perhaps you know a super super whale. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking. I've just I've just done the old Google search for Leviathans. Now that's just thanks to my. You know, coming into it via Final Fantasy, it's always this sort of snake thing with yeah. wings, perhaps. Yeah. Every time I've seen it in there. Um, but I'm seeing lots of stuff that does just look, it looks like a tanked off whale. Um, it's even more believable like that, really. Um, then this big old long snake thing that doesn't seem as optimal as being giant whale. Um, I mean, this, this genus of the, the sperm whale that grew up to about 57 feet. So huge, and mm. to say that, like obviously the squid was long because of its tendrils, but a whale, you know how thick they are throughout. <laughs> like they are, those T I C T T H I C C. They are. Sorry. Yeah, seeing booty shaking and stuff. Like when you say this whale's thick. Sorry, that's just probably. More to do with me than you. Carry on. I mean, if you think about it, it's like fifty-seven feet. If, if going by what you were saying, how many fish or you know whatever you know it eats at that time? What? How? How much would it need to eat in its own body weight to be able to sustain itself? Um, I'm not sure. It was meant to be the one of the largest predators of its time. So, um, yeah, there are some predators now that are specialists in sort of conserving energy as well, aren't they? Yeah. Until it's time to hunt. I mean, given yeah, given that. that genus of sperm whale isn't around anymore and the, the later one is a lot smaller would probably determine the sort of prey that it hunted back mm. then. I think it was, a, it was like 9 million years ago this. But um, Never going to find much evidence no. of it in our lifetime, are we? No. no. But no. I mean, there, 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 could be, there could be um, a, some form of skeletal remains inside where the stomach would be in one of these mm. if they found it but given it, it mind you now it's probably been turned to oil and we've burnt it by now yeah, yeah. um so the blue whale's a hundred foot so 
this is uh, sixty percent of the size of a blue whale, but it was a predator. So I mean, that's pretty pretty darn um, terrifying. Obviously, nine million years ago, they, there wasn't people on ships. But I'm talking about like garden thing. Anime. Yeah, <laughs> bleach. Um, but um, again, uh, we're talking sort of like the the Jewish. I'm not sure when it goes back to. Um, it's a few thousand years BC, at least, and there's a lot of time. Evolutionary wise, there's not that much of time, but there could have been something at the end of its uh, sort of like species lifespan. Mm. For anything to be part of any sort of belief system, there has to be some sort of element of truth in it at the time that belief system comes about. Otherwise, it's never going to take off, right? No yeah, or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, it might be distorted like... a little bit, but. Yeah. There's it's still got to be something there for people to go, yes, yeah. it's not complete nonsense. Everyone so... exaggerate. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. In you know, the Jewish belief system. Then, um, at some point or another, it would have had to have had some sort of relatable truth to it, surely. I'd like to think. Yeah. Oh, agreed. Gotta be, there's got to be something there, whether it's, uh, mm. it could be a hidden agenda, mm. but still to think of something like that, to think that, it'd take a, a, a huge level of intelligence. Mm. You know, you don't just suddenly think oh do you know what i'm gonna magic up a giant dragon in the ocean yeah you don't like when i make comparisons to like real life religions and belief systems do you why because well, it gets a little bit too political <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not bothered as, as long as it's like <laughs> okay it's uh, like okay so from I'm my understanding i'm all inclusive so um i'm cool. not going to knock anybody's religious beliefs i'm not going yeah. to uh support me either mm. You know? I mean, in terms of how far the Leviathan goes into Jewish beliefs, I don't, I don't know. But like, if it's something, it seems a little bit like the the belief system, from what I understand of any anyway, Scientologist, with the whole alien planting seeds and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, it's a bit out there, a big sort of serpenty entity, god type. Creaturey. Like I said, I don't quite know what the Leviathan is to, to Jewish people. Um, but if Garidos. it's something specific to them. Um, <laughs> That's it, Gary Dose. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's something specific to them, that, that in, by today's standard anyway, would seem a little bit sort of out there for me. But, but again, but just the way that we're speaking, then. just the way that we're speaking about it, we're talking thousands of years ago. Mm. There's there's plenty of um, chances that something was similar to that. Maybe exaggerated. Maybe it's not such a shame seen. though if it was and it's not anymore, isn't it? Yeah. It like is. for whatever reason, we was unable to sustain an environment for something as crazy. But maybe maybe it's not. Maybe we wouldn't have been able to trade as easy as we do on the seas with something like that floating around. Mm. But every dog has its day, right? Mm. Every dog. So I think we have literally bled the stone dry. We have yes. Waffled and waffled and waffled, but we didn't go. Off oh, listen! Time. I had to, I still had more mermaid stuff. If you want, no. <laughs> if you want <laughs> no. We've been recording for an hour and five minutes, and I am not. I am not having another three hour session to cut down to at least an hour okay. and a half <laughs> All right. top tip though next time don't give me eight days to research stuff then yeah because <laughs> i will use all notice. eight days you said give me enough notice yeah i know i know it's my fault you did you did yeah so yeah. Nah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll calm down next time so thank you for listening to the latest in the sleepy talk series here is my posh voice <laughs> Don't forget to check out Jordan's Twitch in the description. No e-liquid promo for this one. Bye! Mm -hmm. <laughs>